Welcome to the beginning of our Skittle sorter project. We've got our Skittles here. Nobody likes mixed up Skittles. We need to sort them. Uh, hopefully you've seen the solution of how to make a Skittle sorter online already. We're gonna go ahead and make one similar to that as your version one. When you get started, first thing to do on any project really is to make a plan. So you have a Sharpie, you have some cardboard. Let's draw out what we want to do. We know we're gonna be putting a hundred grams of Skittles all at once into your sorter. So it makes sense for us to build some sort of a hopper. So I'm just gonna draw a, a, like a this like bowl looking thing here where we can dump them in. Um, and then let's just assume that the next step we need to create is a feed. Um, the reason we need a feed is because we're trying to control the flow of Skittles so that as it passes in front of our camera, I'll draw a little sketch of something to represent our camera. As it passes in front of the camera, it needs to be one at a time so that our sorter knows which bin to kick the Skittle. So the way we're gonna control the flow is we have our hopper. The Skittles are gonna walk one at a time down the base here, down our, if we can get a single file feed, we're winning. It's gonna then go one at a time into a device we're gonna call our advancer. A lot of times they look like some, like a circle with notches cut out and it rotates around, uh, ideally serving one at a time. That's a terrible drawing, but it gets the idea where we can kick this thing out. It's gonna go just one at a time and dump the Skittle down into an area where the camera can see what color it is and then communicate that information to our servo motor behind the cardboard that then guides the Skittle into the appropriate bin. So we'll draw some bins down here to represent where they might go. So we'll put a few of them down here and we'll say that maybe this is the one. So we have a green Skittle coming down and maybe it's the one that passes into this bin. And maybe we'll say the oranges, they're all up here in the hopper. They're coming down into the advancer around, and then maybe it's gonna kick the oranges over into this bin. So this is the general idea, uh, but you notice that as is, the Skittles are either going to get stuck, or if we have it at a steep angle, they could fall off. So your group needs to think critically about what angle do you want to have your board. Um, and the way to mount that is you can just glue a side support at the desired angle. And again, that's gonna be up to you. The, the steeper it is, the faster they'll go, the more shallow, the slower. But no matter what, they're still gonna get stuck. The way we overcome this is the way they overcome that same challenge and lots of common automation issues, and they add a small vibration to the whole system. That'll keep everything moving and flowing and hopefully have us sorting precisely. So let's put the plan aside for a second and take a look at how we're gonna vibrate your system. It all comes down to a DC motor. Um, you've hopefully been using DC motors since our last project and you're familiar with how they work, so I won't review that. Uh, but now we're gonna add an offset flywheel. Uh, whenever there's an offset flywheel, there's an imbalance in the motion and that creates a vibration to the motor and then to anything you've attached to the motor. So if this thing's spinning, it'll add vibration to your system. The way the motors work is we need to give an electric current from one wire through the motor and out the other. And the way we do that is with our battery pack. The battery pack creates a voltage, which I like to think of it as imagine there's electrons in here and we pull a slingshot back and just give them a bunch of energy that if given a complete circuit, they will rocket ship around through here and, and uh, come back to the other side of the battery. If we take that circuit, then connect our DC motor, it will do work for us. So I'll hold that there and you can see it. It is in fact vibrating. But I can't hold these with my fingers the whole time. So we're gonna add a little bit of the today's lesson's content about a device called a breadboard. Let's talk about how it works. Um, the breadboard has all these pins that are designed to accept solid core wire. So I can push that in there and it's connected. Any pin that is also connected on the same row is held together the way I just held them together with my fingers. If you look at the inside, you'll notice that each of the rows is connected not across the trough. And then also you're gonna see that these long lines with the blue and the red are actually connected together. The idea is you can connect your power source, notice the convention, our positives and our negatives, they're blue and they're red, and now that voltage from the battery is connected to this entire side. So anything connected to that is gonna receive that voltage. Let's take a quick look, and if I do it just right, and we'll see if we can't get this breadboard to hold our wires And there. Sure enough, now I've got a hands-free, complete circuit with our breadboard. We'll be getting into the breadboard more in the future, but now we know how it works. All right, so you have your plan, you have your motor, and you've got your vibration system ready. Let's talk a quick little couple things about safety and best practices in uh, building. 
When you're doing these things, you're gonna be given a bunch of popsicle sticks and hot glue. Quick little thing is only just a little bit of hot glue is plenty to do the job that we need. So I got a little tiny spot there and a little tiny spot there. And that is all we'll need to do something such as this. And this right here will, will, will dry in a matter of seconds. If I had taken a popsicle stick and glued, like held it here and glued a whole line along the seam, that's when it takes it like five minutes to dry and it's over, it's not necessary. This is plenty strong for our purposes. So remember, just a little bit dries faster and it's strong enough. The next thing to consider is safety. You're gonna be giving us um, a box cutter knife. It does have a very, very sharp blade. When you're cutting, just make sure you're cutting through the cardboard into the scrap wood that's given to you. It's when you're holding it in the air and you cannot see your fingers that you're most likely to hurt yourself. So the general rule is make sure you can see all of your fingers cut down into the board. So with that said, you know about the plan, you know about which angle you're gonna set it out, you know how to get your whole system vibrating, and you've got an idea of what's coming up next. Best of luck.